maybe, maybe some good news for folks in Shanghai, Beijing, and thousands of other cities and towns across China. And that is the potential end, finally, of China's painful zero COVID policy. Now, these are hopes, but they're just hopes right now. But those hopes are helping stocks. Eunice Yun is in Beijing with the latest on the ground of what we're seeing and hearing. Eunice. Thanks so much, Brian. Well, officially, of course, zero COVID is the policy here. But there was uh, what appeared to be a bit of a shift in the public messaging, which could potentially lay the groundwork for an exit to zero COVID. An epidemiologist who was formerly with the Chinese CDC uh, told the city event that the policy would see, quote, substantive changes within six months, setting progress on homegrown vaccines. Also, the official People's Daily reported that the effects of long COVID are mild and said that controls should be precise. They said not full-blown lockdowns over single cases. Now, zero COVID has not only been constraining for the economy, but also on government finances, especially local. The uh, several local governments actually announced this week that they're going to start charging for tests. Now, there are still signs, though, that the Chinese are only willing to go so far. In a visit to China by the German, by the German uh, chancellor to Beijing in order to meet President Xi Jinping, the chancellor announced that China has agreed to approve the import of the BioNTech vaccine, but only, Brian, for foreign residents, so not to be widely dispersed among the Chinese population. Yeah, you guys still don't have the Western vaccines. But listen, Eunice, I, I, first off, it's, it's almost year three. I mean, I, I, you know, I can't imagine what you guys have gone through these lockdowns, mental health-wise, everything else. But from an economic point of view, if zero COVID is so draining for the government's own budget, why haven't they been moving faster? Does not care about the money? Well, no, well, so from a, a health perspective, uh, the country and the medical system might not be ready for it. But um, as I was uh, alluding to before, uh, the Communist Party has to rewrite the whole narrative around zero COVID in order to really um, set the stage for an exit. Uh, so far, the uh, Communist Party has really been painting itself as infallible. And uh, they've been describing zero COVID as a mark of how the Chinese system is superior to the U.S.'s and indeed um, the overall um, systems in the West. So a lot of people in the process has been very scared of the virus. So politically and socially, the government here uh, really needs to make a wholesale change of the zero COVID story. And um, in addition yeah. to that, we don't really know uh, what Beijing's overarching um, definition will be of what an exit of zero COVID is. Uh, we're supposed to get some more information over the weekend Let's when the hope. health commission um, and as well as other health authorities yeah. hold but, a briefing on what they say are going to be targeted measures and prevention control. I'm thinking about you and, and some of the other friends I've got over there as well. I just saw in Reuters, by the way, that the number of cases in Shanghai was the highest since May. So you wonder if it's even effective. And to change it would have to kind of admit that, hey, by the way, we've been wrong for the last three years. I can't see that happening. Rooting for you. Eunice, thank you very much.